Welcome to today's presentation of the Penn State Alumni Association's Travel Showcase. I'm Kelly Morganti, Assistant Director of the Alumni Travel Program with more great 2023 destinations. For more than 50 years, the Penn State Alumni Association has been offering group travel. This week, I have been showcasing three destinations a day with one of our trusted travel partners. And today is no different. However, today we're gonna to be visiting four continents and delving into the history, wildlife, and culture of each. Based on the features made available on your audience console today, you can view slides, hear presenters via the main stage, chat with other attendees, find additional resources, links, and more. Be sure to drop in where you're viewing from in our chat feature and tell us where you'd like to go next. To access closed captioning, please click the CC button located within the main stage. Following the event, you can email any questions to alumni travel at psu.edu. Today, I'm joined by Odysseys Unlimited representative, Claudia Dunn, manager of the special interest groups. Welcome, Claudia. Odysseys has Unlimited has been specializing in small group travel, especially within the affinity market for over 20 years. Tell us a little bit about the company and its relationship with Penn State. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Okay, here we go. Hi there. Hi. Um, well, uh, I'd like to thank you and the Alumni Association first for um, giving Odysseys Unlimited the opportunity to join Penn State today. Oh, pleasure. Uh, and um, I've been working as a program manager with Odysseys Unlimited for six years now. I've had um, the great pleasure of working with you, closely with you, planning and executing planning, marketing, and executing trips every year for your alumni association. Uh, Odysseys Unlimited located in Newton, Mass has been in business for 23 years, working with Penn State for 20 of those years. I'd like to tell you a little bit more about Odysseys. Um, first, for those of you who have traveled with us, thank you, and we look forward to hosting you again on future tours. For those of you who have not been on an Odyssey's tour, here's a brief overview. We are a land-based small group tour operator that offers over 50 tours worldwide, including the US and Canada. We always limit the size of our groups to 12 to 24 guests, providing our travelers with a more personalized and intimate tour experience. Our tour directors are top-notch and known to be the best in the industry, we include unique accommodations, including stays in boutique style properties. All transportation, including airfare from your home city within the US is included when purchasing the land and air package. If you wish to make your own flights, the land only package is available. Our tours feature extensive sightseeing with entry fees to sightseeing venues included. And your $500 deposit is fully refundable up until 95 days prior to departure. Yeah, our, our groups absolutely love that small size, that, that 12 to 24 passengers. Um, they rave about that. And you're right, your tour directors are phenomenal. Um, so we get a lot of really great feedback on those. Um, so like I had mentioned, we're going to be talking about four different continents today. Uh, so let's just jump right in and, and talk about Australia first. Great. Well, um, exploring Australia and New Zealand, this is a wide, wide ranging 22 day adventure. We head to the lands down under from Australia's spectacular Great Barrier Reef and the storied outback to sophisticated Sydney. We continue to New Zealand's towering Mount Cook and breathtaking Melford Sound to high spirited Queenstown and nautical Auckland. Join us from April 1st to the 22nd, 2023. Extend your adventure on an optional three-day, two-night post-tour extension in Auckland on your own. We depart the U.S. on April 3rd, arriving in Cairns two days later. Spend a day in the mountain village of Coranda before we depart for the Great Barrier Reef, the world's largest living reef in the world at over 1,400 miles long. We board a catamaran with opportunities to swim, snorkel and view the reef from an air-conditioned semi-submersible vessel. Lunch is aboard ship. Fly from Cairns to Alice Springs to visit Ayers Rock, 
officially known as Uluru in the local Aboriginal dialect. In the next three days, highlights here include meeting the Walperi tribes people to learn about their ancient culture in a natural, natural bush setting, visiting and learning about the 70-year-old School of the Air, a distant school which offers a wide range of educational services and activities to isolated school children in Central Australia, and watching the sunset over Uluru, the fabled sandstone monolith that rises above a thousand feet. As a special experience, we enjoy a traditional Outback Bushman's dinner around a campfire beneath the Southern Hemisphere's constellations. Our next portion of our journey is Sydney, the capital of New South Wales. Highlights in this beautiful, safe, with friendly people include exploring the rocks, one of Sydney's oldest neighborhood, neighborhoods with its cobbled streets, cozy cafes, and Australia's oldest pub, taking a catamaran for a sail around the harbor with lunch aboard, wandering Featherdale Wildlife Park for a guided tour to see koalas, kangaroos, dingoes, wallabies, and a variety of native birds, and of course, touring the iconic Sydney Opera House, which is uniquely shaped white roof that is instantly recognizable and a symbol of Sydney. We board a flight to Christchurch, New Zealand, where we witnessed the progress made to rebuild this area after the devastating 2011 earthquake. We venture south to stunning Mount Cook National Park in the Southern Alps, New Zealand's greatest alpine preserve of turquoise lakes and snowtop mountains. One of the highlights is staying in the heart of the National Park at the Hermitage Hotel, seen in the photo on the left which is step, a step within hikes and or flight scene. For Mount Cook, we depart for Queenstown, New Zealand's adventure capital, nestled between a jagged range of snow-capped mountains known as the Remarkables, and you can see why from the photos. We leave for Milford Sound with its simply glorious alpine scenery, located in Fiordland National Park. The sound itself is massive. It measures 10 miles long and one and a half miles wide and at its broadest point. We admire the spectacle of nature on a two and a half hour cruise past cascading waterfalls, rainforests, and sheer rock walls. We depart Queenstown and take a flight to New Zealand's North Island to Rotorua, the spiritual home of the Maori people. It is also known for its dramatic geysers, bubbling mud pools and hot thermal springs. A unique element of this tour is experiencing and enjoying a traditional Maori hangi dinner, followed by a performance. We also visit the National Kiwi Trust, which rehabilitates injured kiwis, New Zealand's national bird, followed by free time in Rotorua, where you may relax in the thermal springs or, if you're the adventurous type, zip line over the native forest. We conclude our journey in cosmopolitan Auckland, New Zealand's largest city. See and visit the iconic Auckland Harbor and Bridge and the America's Cup Village, the site of the world-renowned sailing race in 2021. Then explore the War, War Memorial Museum with its prized Maori and Pacific Islander collections. On April 22nd, we depart very early in the morning for the flight to Los Angeles via Sydney and our return flights home. You know, Australia always sells out so quickly for us. Um, so, and we're already taking reservations on this. So I recommend that our travelers book soon um, because this is just such a great destination. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to Europe and the Iberian Peninsula. Happy to. So this is Peridors and Pusabas. Experience the rich history and vibrant contemporary life of the Iberian Peninsula on a 15-day journey that brings us to the small and intimate lodgings of Spain's Peridors and Portugal's Posadas. See Lisbon's sites and encounter Ivora, one of the most influential cities of medieval Portugal. Discover Merida's Roman ruins, Sevilla's romance, and Cordoba, a cultural gem. Explore Granada with its extraordinary Alhambra, visit the Imperial City of Toledo, and conclude the journey in Spain's capital city, Madrid, for three nights. Please join us from May 15th to the 29th, 2023, on this special trip. 
You may extend your journey on an optional four day, three night post tour extension in Barcelona. We depart the US on May 15th and arrive in Lisbon the next day. Although our time in Lisbon is short, we will see a lot. Admiring the iconic Bellum Tower, a symbol of Lisbon, touring the monument to the discoveries, which commemorates Portugal's ex storied explorers such as Vasco da Gama and Ferdinand Magellan, and visiting the National Palace of Quales, the former residence of Portuguese royalty, now used for state occasions. Next, we're off to Portugal's agricultural region, filled with olive groves, cork trees, fragrant vineyards, and bountiful wheat fields. Arrive in Evora, a university town and prosperous regional capital. Here we stay at the first of our unique lodgings at the intimate Posada dos Llos. Once a 15th century covenant, the Posada's rooms were the cells of former monks. Explore this ancient walled town with its many streets so narrow they must be navigated on foot. We leave Ivora and drive east for Spain. Stop in the ancient city of Merida, exploring the ruins of a Roman amphitheater before continuing on to Carmona and our next distinctive lodging. Our Parador, a restored 14th century Arab fortress seen in the upper right-hand side, offers tranquility, exquisite cuisine, and the picturesque scenery, and is our home for the next three nights. From here, we explore splendid Sevilla, Moorish capital of Spain's Andalusia region, and the city of Romance, and lovely Cordoba, where the Moors ruled from the 8th to the 11th centuries and fostered a culture of learning and religious harmony known the world over. Travel south to the charming, unspoiled town of Ronda. Enjoy the best view in town from our Parador, Ronda's restored 18th century city hall at the edge of El Tajo Gorge at 500 feet deep and 300 feet wide, as pictured on the upper right, upper left hand side. Leaving Ronda this morning, we travel to Granada to experience perhaps the most extraordinary and best preserved Morris monument in existence, the Alhambra, the grand palace portrait of Spain's last Moorish rulers. We tour the palace as well as, as its acclaimed gardens. Late in the afternoon, we travel north to Ubeda to our last Parador. We leave for Madrid, stopping in Toledo en route, declared a Spanish, Spanish national landmark. Little has visually changed for, from Toledo's 16th century day, days, once a subject for the artist El Greco. We conclude our journey in Madrid, taking a panoramic city tour, which includes Plaza Mayor, the Grand Square in the heart of the city, in the majestic Royal Palace, a 2800 room Rococo style residence that was home to Spanish kings. For the Prado, one of the world's greatest museums of fine art to see the works of Goya, El Greco and El Velazquez. Enjoy free time in Madrid before we bid adios to Spain and our fellow travelers as a festive farewell dinner. We I love Spain and I highly recommend the, the extension in Barcelona. Uh, it just can't be missed. Can't be missed. And it, it's just uh, so different, uh, you know, from, from Barcelona on to, to Madrid. It, it, it is. It is. The, the difference between, you know, in, in a country that size, um, the, the difference between the regions is, is very dramatic. Um, so uh, to, to fully get a full experience, I highly recommend the the uh, Barcelona extension and just the 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 type of lodgings that you stay in there are so unique um, that it, they make the entire trip. So yeah. yeah. So let's go ahead and move the, uh, south now and let's go down to um, Africa and talk about a safari. Great. Well, this is our classic safari, which includes Kenya and Tanzania, with exceptional wildlife viewing, top-rated safari lodges. Gracious local people all await us on a 16 day safari in alluring Kenya and Tanzania. We start by seeing the highlights of Nairobi, Kenya's capital, before making our way to Amboseli National Park, known for its elephants. We move south and across border to Tanzania to the diverse, diverse Lake Manyara National Park. 
continue to spectacular Nungorkor crater where we may see Africa's big five. Visit Olduvai Gorge en route to the vast and storied Serengeti and conclude in Kenya's premier wildlife reserve, Maasai Mara, before returning to Nairobi. Join us on an intimate trip with a maximum of 18 guests from September 5th through the 20th, 2023. And I do want to emphasize it's a small group, so it's, it's a, a great way to, uh, to safari. Yeah. There is an option um, to stay at the legendary Mount Kenya Safari Club to encounter more wildlife on our three-day, two-night post-tour extension in Kenya. So let's start. On September 5th, we depart the U.S. and arrive in Nairobi the following day. As arrival times may vary, we have the day to rest after long flights. On our first full day in East Africa, we set out to see Nairobi's highlights. These include stopping at the home and now museum of Danish writer Karen Blixen, who wrote Out of Africa, and visiting the Giraffe Center, a wildlife sanctuary which provides outdoor education to Kenyan school children, and where we had the opportunity to come into close contact with the endangered Rothschild giraffe. We set out on a drive to Amboseli National Park in the shadows of snow-capped Mount Kilimanjaro the world's tallest freestanding mountain at 19,341 feet, which actually lies in neighboring Tanzania. Known for its elephants, the park is also home to herds of wildebeest, zebra, impala, and giraffe, all which may be seen this afternoon. The next day, we visited a nearby village as guests at a local Maasai school where we interact with the children and their teachers. Then in the late afternoon, once the intensity of the sun has worn off, we venture on another wildlife viewing drive. In between, we have time to relax at our comfortable lodge with an outdoor pool fed by the waters of ice melt from Mount Kilimanjaro and watering holes that draw the animals. And here's a photo you'll see. This is of Mount Kilimanjaro and an elephant. Uh, I have to say the, the likelihood of people seeing Mount Kilimanjaro is pretty rare because it's usually uh, uh, clouded over uh, just because it is a freestanding mountain. But if you're lucky, I mean, people do get to see it, so. And what a treat, you know, and to be able to see it with, with an elephant there, I mean, whoever, took this picture probably camped out for weeks, but that was great. Thanks to them. We drive across the border into Tanzania, a biologically rich nation that has designated nearly 40% of its land area as protected national parkland. Our destination is Lake Manara National Park, one of Tanzania's smallest and most diverse parks with an abundant bird life of approximately 400 species. Here we see elephants grazing beneath baobab trees, lions dozing on the branches of umbrella trees, hippos sunbathing on the lake shore, and flamingos painting the lake a colorful pink. You're really gonna pinch yourself <laughs> in this experience. You will also travel very comfortably. We, traver we traverse enclosed vehicles, which are generally modified four by four land cruisers. Vehicles have three rows of comfortable seating and accommodate six guests, allowing everyone a window seat to the greatest show on earth. They have pop-top roof hatches, which may be raised for 360 degree views, wonderful for snapping memorable photos. We then head out to the spectacular Nungorongor Conservation Area, named for its crater at 2000 feet deep and 10 miles wide, and known as the world's largest intact volcanic caldera. Set out for multiple drives on the vast crater floor where we have a chance to see all of Africa's big five, lion, leopard, rhino, elephant, and African buffalo. On the crater's floor is Africa in microcosm. You'll have grasslands, swamps, lakes, forests, mountains, and unparalleled wildlife, including the rare black rhino and black mane male lion among its 25,000 or so creatures. We stay at Ngorongoro Serena Lodge, perched on the west side of the crater, offering endless views and quick access to the crater floor. And I'll say to be able to, because you're right, you, you're right at the crater 
right at the edge. So you're able to get down before uh, other safari vehicles arrive on the floor. Nice, very nice. Leaving in Gorongoro, we're bound for the Serengeti, the Maasai's 5,700 square mile endless plain, considered Africa's finest park and one of the world's largest great wild re wildlife refuge, which is the size of Connecticut, to give reference. On the way, we visit 31 mile Olduvite Gorge in the Great Rift Valley, where in 1959, anthropologist Mary Leakey revolutionized the study of human evolution. We arrive in the Serengeti with the highest concentration of large animals on the planet and the best locale to see lion, leopard, and cheetah up close. Our safari lodge is centrally co located in the park and optimal for viewing herds of wildebeest, zebra, and Thompson's gazelle, known as the Great Migration, as they search for water and food. And this is a really wonderful time to be in this area. In, sept you know, in September, you're going to be in prime location. That's what, yeah, that's what you and I had talked when we had decided on this trip. This is a good time to get to see all this. That's great. We depart Tanzania on a flight back to Kenya for the Maasai Mara National Reserve. As Kenya's premier game reserve abutting the Serengeti, the Maasai Mara is rich with animal life and is also the traditional homeland of the native Maasai people who now live and herd their cattle in villages outside the park. These semi-nomadic people have called the Mara home for millennia and live in harmony with the wildlife surrounding them. Hence, they rarely hunt, <laughs> hence they rarely hunt. We spend the next two days on safari, venturing out on early morning and late afternoon drives during prime viewing hours to glimpse leopard, cheetah, zebra, giraffe, gazelle, buffalo, hippo, rhino, and other wildlife native to this area. When not in the bush, we can enjoy our camp, including spa treatments and outdoor pool, nature walks, and cultural and wildlife talks. We fly back to Nairobi on the morning of September 18th. We have lunch at a local restaurant and continue on to our hotel, Fairmont the Norfolk, which has been center of city life since its founding in 1904. We have time to freshen up and repack. And tonight we have a farewell dinner with our new friends. The following day, we transfer to the Nairobi airport and board our flight arriving in the US on September 20th. Except for those who decide to stay for those extra three days. Which I would, recommend there I, I would too you know that classic safari is really high on my bucket list um, I'm just kind of wondering how maybe the African lions compared to the Nittany lions um, but anyhow leaving behind the vast landscapes of Africa let's go ahead to the west coast of South America um, and start in Lima Peru sure well this is our treasures of Peru trip um, we, 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 it's an 11 day journey beginning with Lima's highlights both colonial and modern we experienced Peru's rich culture in the beautiful Sacred Valley, visiting Incan ruins and indigenous villages. Overnighting at a nearby hotel, we spend, the t we spend time exploring the magical Machu Picchu before making our way to Cusco to see impressive ruins. We conclude our journey traveling south to Lake Titicaca, a unique locale on our journey. I had the wonderful pleasure of traveling on this tour with the company in 2016 and sincerely hope you'll join us from September 11th to the 21st, 2023. You may also opt to discover the Amazon rainforest by joining the four day, four night post tour extension. On September 11th, we depart the US for the Peruvian capital Lima. Here we have a full day to explore colonial Lima with visits to the city's main square, Bustling Plaza de Armas, the treasured Casa Aliaga, one of the oldest homes in Lima, circa 1535, with its rich architectural heritage and collection of Peruvian art and artifacts, and the Rafael Larco Herrera Museum, home to a unique display of pre-Hispanic ceramics and where we have a relaxing lunch amidst the Bullion Villa. We fly to Cusco, a city nestled to the central Andes at over 11,000 feet above sea, sea level. We visit the sacred sites of Coriconcha 
in Santo Domingo before continuing north by motor coach into the sacred valley of the Incas in the town of Pisac, the largest of the Incas fortress city complexes. We stop at a colorful Quechua market where we have ample time here to admire and bargain for the many crafts on offer. For the next two nights, we, we stay at the Sacred Valley at the scenic Sonesta Posada, which was once an 18th century monastery. Here we attend an ancient ceremony in honor of Mother Earth led by a local shaman. And I have to say, I, I just love this hotel. Um, it's a, it's a beautiful the location is just gorgeous very comfortable it's just such unique accommodations on, on all of these trips but you know th to be able to to stay in, in this kind of lodging is just something you cannot do with every trip we board a train for the one and a half hour journey to the trip's highlight spectacular and remote machu picchu known as the lost city of the incans this ancient city in the cloud defies imagination and seemingly the laws of gravity, physics, and architecture. Thanks to the small size of our group, we are able to move nimbly through the ruins with our guide to leisurely absorb the beauty and wonder of this haunting site perched close to 8,000 feet above sea level. After a busy day, we return to our world-renowned lodge in Katera Machu Picchu, recognized as one of the unique lodges of the world by National Geographic and voted as one of the top hotels in South America by Condé Nast Traveler readers in 2018. And here you'll see our group um, at Machu Picchu. It was, it was a wonderful group. What a view, I mean, and and so one of the questions we do get asked about this um, is, you know, getting up there, but you guys go by train, so it's not over, overly strenuous for our travelers to be able to, to make this climb to Machu Picchu. Not at all. And the, and the train ride is absolutely gorgeous. So they, we have, the windows are, um, you can see also it's part of the ceiling. So you can see it, the views again, 360 degree views. You have coffee, tea, uh, water, you know, you can uh, get some little bite. So it, it's it's actually a wonderful way to, um, Great. to get there. Great, yeah, we, we get a lot of questions about that, about, you know, how difficult it is, but, you know, with, with the train, it makes it much more accessible to our travelers. Mm -hmm. Well, and right. also the way that we've set up the trip, you're flying to Cusco, which is at higher altitude than Machu Picchu, Cusco's 11,000. And then, so the thought is that you go high and then you kind of make your way back. And that's a, a great way to acclimate to the altitude. Good, good. So yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Before the tourist filled trains arrive in Cusco today, we take one more guided tour of the ruins with time to admire the early morning light on the surrounding peaks. Machu Picchu was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983. And I really liked being there early in the morning. Uh, it's just very mystical. Um, Before all the tourists get there. Exactly. Yep. So after reluctantly bidding farewell to this treasured Incan site, we returned to Cusco, which I, act I really enjoyed this portion of the trip. Oh. With its mixed Spanish Inca heritage. We explore the Grand Plaza de Armas, the main square surrounded by arcades and quaint homes. Presiding over the plaza is the 16th century cathedral and its churches, boasting gold and silver plated altars. We also admire Saxi Woman, the most impressive Incan ruins near Cusco, whose ramparts are made of precisely fitted boulders, some 33 feet high, some 33 feet high and weighing 360 tons. It's just amazing. It's incredible what, what's been done. We depart for the day long journey by coach to Puno on the shores of Lake Titicaca. We spend the day exploring the fascinating life surrounding the lake, South America's largest at 12,500 feet above sea level and among the world's highest navigable lakes. By boat, we visit floating islands that are made of reeds inhabited by the Euros people whom we spend time with. We also witnessed the breathtaking natural beauty surrounding us with Bolivia's snow-capped mountains at a, as a striking backdrop. Puno is certainly off the beaten path. 
We return to our hotel overlooking the lake where we celebrate our Peruvian adventure at a farewell dinner. You'll take a flight back to Lima and return to the US on September 21st. I know we didn't talk about this beforehand, but talk just a little bit about the extension that goes up to the Amazon. Uh, well, actually, the, um, and I can give you a, a little more. Um, so for that uh, extension, so that's about four days, you're going to um, Iquitos and mm -hmm. um, and you're getting the true experience. You're with another uh, guide at, at that point. Right. And um, it's, it's, I did not personally get to experience that. So I can't speak um, as intimately about that, but I, my, my travel companion did, and I loved it and loved to, to see that the, the, it's, I mean, it's just a, so different because you're at high altitude in most of the places that we're visiting, except for Lima. And then here you go into the rainforest, right. and really getting to experience indigenous culture. Yeah. And again, just a completely different, you know, you're not, you're not, uh, surroundings, um, you know, from, from where you came from. So again, very different in the same country. Um, so yeah, so I know that, you know, we, we all talk about some of the ever-changing protocols and stuff for COVID, but let's talk real briefly about what's going on right now. Sure. So uh, first, I just want to mention that guest well-being is our top priority. Um, these, so we have a team at Odysseys and it, that are eva constantly evaluating the policies and keeping um, our guests' health and safety in mind, as well as you know, our employees that include tour directors, local guides, uh, motor coach drivers. Um, so we have, a, we, we have a, a lot of responsibility. So we've taken some um, good measures uh, in hand. Guests are, re I'd like to review a little of them. Guests are required to be fully vaccinated and boosted against COVID-19 prior to the arrival on tour. Okay. Um, as are all our tour directors and long haul motor coach drivers. Oh, uh, Odysseys will be sending COVID-19 health and safety forms to all guests prior to departure. Guests must sign these forms and adhere to our protocols while on tour. I actually am going to be going to Europe with Odysseys in August. So I just did this myself um, just recently. And it was very simple to do. We have a, a, a guest portal now where guests can uh, make final payments Good. and um, access all documents um, so they don't have to worry about paper. Well, they change so often, so it's just very easy to be able to keep it updated when it's online like that. Yes, that's correct. That's great. And then additional entry requirements may be required by foreign governments. So Odysseys will keep you up to date on all such requirements. And um, the one thing that this company is, it, it, keep guests well informed, yeah. um, lots of communication, but that's, that's good. And we've received wonderful feedback about that. So. And that's, it's really hard. I mean, you know, even, even though, you know, you and I are both sort of been in the industry for a while now, but trying to find the information about, you know, what airlines are requiring documentation, what countries are requiring documentation, and even within the same country, what different regions are, um, so that Odysseys is, you know, taking that sort of burden off the hands of our travelers is, is fantastic. Um, but yeah, and then you can see, everybody can see there's a, actually a, a, the web link um, down below will take you straight to the COVID-19 safety protocol page. Yes, and that 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 site is up to date. Okay. And I, I was just thinking about the trips that we're going to be offering to Penn State. Um, many of them have multi destinations, but multi countries. So right. protocols are different, and mm -hmm. and so we will let you know that's something that you just don't have to worry about once you're crossing borders. The you know what what um, do I need to take a test? Right. Know, just the requirements. We'll keep everyone up to date on those. That's fantastic. And they, they are still seem to be changing on such a regular basis. It's hard to keep, keep track of it all, you know, on your own so that, the, um, you know, Odysseys has a whole team that is doing that for you. So fantastic. So, well, um, 
you know, thank you. Thank you for coming and talking to us about these wonderful destinations. Um, you know, I, joining me today, it certainly makes um, makes me want to travel some more. Um, I feel like my suitcases are, are still a little, um, you know, dusty and they need, we should go see someplace some fun and exciting, I think. So. <laughs> Yes, so, and we, I, I also we want I want to thank you uh, uh, for allowing us to to join you uh, on this showcase, and and um, we I, we just wish everyone to stay healthy and safe. Yes, yes, um, yes. Yeah, certainly, with the world reopening, you know, travel is making a, a huge comeback um, this year. Twenty twenty three promises to be even more popular. Um, so again, I would not wait. These are small groups, um, so we are very limited as to the number of travelers we can take on each one. Um, links to um, our reservation pages with all these trip informations are in the um, quick link box at the bottom, as well as uh, links to each of these individual trips to get some more detailed information. Um, I want to, you know, uh, anybody who wants to check out any of our trips, uh, remaining 2022 or our future 2023 trips can visit the um, main website at alumni.psu.edu with a backslash travel. And I hope that everybody enjoyed today's presentation. Um, take the time to visit our webpage, send me any questions, check out our main webpage, which is just psu.alumni.psu.edu to check out all of our virtual programming. We have a quite a variety out there available to all of us. And tomorrow I'm gonna be back and we're gonna be talking cruises on both ocean and river with uh, Go Next CEO, John Weeks. So um, again, all of our virtual travel programs are recorded. Uh, if you'd like to view any of our previous sessions, you can find them at alumni.psu.edu under the events tab, and a link to today's presentation will be sent out shortly. I hope to travel with you all again soon. Have a great night.